And that's because what makes you successful in the sciences hurts you in cars. Phil, back for another MCAT podcast. Last week, we talked about the new registration and dates. Hopefully, everyone has signed up if they're planning on taking the MCAT at the beginning of 2021. If you are planning on taking it and you haven't registered, what are you waiting for? Go register. Um, <laughs> exactly. Re reschedule if you need to. Uh, we're going to continue our breakdown of Blueprint MCAT's full-length one. We're in the cars section, passage six. If you want access to this passage, to this full length, go to, uh, the best place is probably just go to blueprintprep.com slash MCAT and sign up for all of their free resources there. With that said, what are your thoughts, Phil? I'm excited to get back into some cars. Yeah, it's been cars. a while. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I know it's not everyone's favorite topic. And I know I've talked about in the past, like I personally struggled with cars when I first started just because it like wasn't content based. And so how do you improve on something that's not like you can't study it? Um, there's no content to know. Um, that being said, like through pain and suffering and months of months of trepidation, um, <laughs> I actually feel like cars is probably my strongest area at this point. Um, but definitely didn't start off that way. So I'm I'm here just to uh, clarify and maybe ease that transition. So you guys don't have to go through the exact same pain that I had to go to go through, um, you know, save you a little bit of time and effort there and we'll go ahead and jump in now with our passage yeah i feel like this passage might actually be you know like super there's a lot of passages that are like yeah maybe i don't care i don't <laughs> know anything about this um but i feel like you might like especially have some interest in this one kind of like understanding how like businesses kind of work overall that's something you got to be careful of though because if you know or have an interest in the topic you got to be careful not to bring in your outside knowledge so just like glancing at this i'm like ooh, like if i am interested in small businesses i need to i need to be careful with my yeah. views there um so just starting right off the top you know like hopping into the passage those who would proffer advice to small and medium-sized businesses and ask for compensation to do so must first demonstrate their qualifications when considering whether or not to hire a consultant, the skeptical business owner rightly asks, if you know how to make a business much more profitable, why are you not doing so yourself? Uh, to, to respond, the consultant must first demonstrate a personal history of success at starting and growing businesses. <laughs> I so, love this question. It's like, uh, if you're a great football coach, why don't you just go and play football? Right, right. That's actually like a surprisingly like relevant thing. Mm -hmm. um, I There are people in like, you know, like trying to like advocate, like, here's how you make a bunch of money buying and flipping houses. And you're like, why, why are you doing that then? <laughs> right. Like in that case. Mm -hmm. um, but something that I might note on this, right, we're always looking for the author's opinion for the author's like viewpoint, how that contrasts with other opinions and viewpoints here. And so I don't know if everyone is, this is going to jump out to, to, to people, but in, right in the middle of that paragraph, it says the skeptical business owner rightly asks. Mm -hmm. And that rightly is so important. That makes the hair like stand up on the back of my neck. Bells are ringing in my head yeah. because not only is that telling you that the, the business owner feels this way, but the author agrees, right? The author mm -hmm. of the passage is like, yeah, like they're, they're asking this. This is the right question to be asking. And so you always want to be on the lookout for that. You know, that's an adverb. I don't know much about like adjectives and, you know, uh, past participles. I don't even really know what that is. Um, but I know adverbs because they're so important on the MCAT. Basically anything in L-Y, like wisely, strangely, fortunately, rightly. Um, that gives you a window into how the author actually feels about the topic. So that's ringing some bells. So in the next paragraph, if a consultant was not a successful business owner themselves, their primary concern would be developing reliable methodologies for increasing client success and then presenting an empirically verifiable track record of success with past clients. That's that's a mouthful of a sentence there. Um, but basically, we have kind of a set up a contrast here. Like if the consultant is not building their own businesses, mm. they need to show that they are developing methodologies to make this work. And it's they, they've been able to show this empirically. While maintaining client confidentiality is a top concern of the ethical consultant, he must be ready and able to present contact information of past satisfied clients as references to potential new clients. Right. Um, I love that you looked at that, like the ethical bit and like, mm -hmm. Ooh, like an ethical consultant. Yeah. Um, 
I also, like that sentence starts while maintaining, right? So that's a contrasty sort of sentence there, right? If I say, you know, like, while this restaurant has great food, right? <laughs> Whatever I'm going to say next yeah. to the counter. They that. have rats in the kitchen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so there's something there with that while kind of like, ooh, some contrast going on. Also, there's this line, he must be ready and able to present contact information. That's mm -hmm. a really bold statement. Normally, if I see like extreme answers, like that say must or always, I don't, I like, I cringe and I like, I don't like that. I don't like the extreme answer choices. Um, but if the passage is extreme, all of a sudden you can have an extreme answer choice. Mm -hmm. Right. And that opens the door to those answers that normally you'd run away screaming from. Like now it's like, oh, like if it says you must do this like that, the passage actually kind of supported that. Yeah. Um, and so you got you want to be on the lookout for those as well. Note that most of the time those fall into the author's opinion. Right. Like the author saying like, no, like you must do this. And so there's there's a viewpoint here that is from the author and it's a pretty extreme one. Yep. Um, so this consultant can then present both a general summary of his methods and a demonstration of past successes. So. Just like stepping back, I know I like talk a lot in these passages and kind of like pause because I'm trying to give students a window into like what's going on in my head as I'm reading. And there's a lot of stuff that like I don't really care as much about, but things that I do, I want to like highlight. So the first paragraph, right? Like the author thinks business owners should be asking this question of like, why, what, why should I listen to you? Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's either got to be they ran successful businesses or they've got a track record of proving that they've helped other businesses. If that's the case, you must be able to like give references. Yeah. Um, so looking at the, the third paragraph, when a consultant cannot justify his asking price with these foundational pieces of proof, the business owner should rightly, hopefully everyone's noticing that again, wonder at the value uh, at the value on offer. The New York Times expose on the fraudulent practices of a circle of business financial consultant raises the question not why would they do such a thing? A after all, fraud is nothing new, and the impulse to easy money drives individuals to far more criminal acts than useless consulting. Instead, it raises the question, how were so many thousands of business owners duped? And so we have this, like the, the New York Times, like wondering, like, just like, how, how could these business owners have been so stupid, right? <laughs> like, why are they giving money to these consultants, which actually have, like, no track record, no know anything mm. um so this opens the door to like you know so what could be going it's the wrong. same reason everyone wants a magic pill for diet <laughs> yes exactly right yeah like why would somebody why would you give money away to somebody because you want to believe right yes. um got to be careful though like that's like that's you like answering this question and you got to be careful because the the passage hasn't told you why these business owners feel that way. Definitely makes sense in the real world. But, you know, like taking a step back, like the question just is, why were so many people duped? And we have no idea at this point, even mm -hmm. though we probably have an idea. Um, <laughs> just got to like take that info and crumple it into a ball and throw it out the window. So while it may seem absurd to those who have uh, the drive, talent, and business acumen to start an and grow a smaller, medium-sized business would then be duped by business consultants charging tens of thousands of dollars for fake services, we must remember the specific climate that per permits such chicanery to occur. In the past decade, a series of high-profile pieces of legislation, the Dodd-Frank bill, Obamacare, et cetera, once again, be very careful not to bring in your outside opinion. <laughs> Everyone's got an opinion on Obamacare. It doesn't matter like what the opinion is, but you got one. Um, and so you got to be kind of careful not to bring that. So in the past decade, we have all these high profile pieces that altered the landscape for businesses. Such laws and their implementing regulations have added thousands of pages of text to the federal books. Faced with staggering amounts of information, it's entirely understandable that the small business owner would seek expert help. In the past, business owners would turn to the attorney or to a respected longstanding law firm for guidance. So like here, here's their answer. To this, like, why would so many people fall for this, like, like stupid, like giving money to consultants? Well, they're they're kind of answering that here, like, well, the laws change and people are unsure of what to do, and so you do this. There's also this like last sentence that has kind of an implied contrast, right? In the past, this is what was done, which means that now we must be doing something different. Otherwise, they would say, you do this, 
but they said in the past we did this, right? And so that's like an implied contrast that's a little bit trickier. And so you want to be kind of paying attention. So in the past, that's what we did. We would just go to like a lawyer or a law firm um, for guidance. Yep. In fact, this is exactly the practice advocated by the Association of Chambers of Commerce Executives and other prominent organizations built for the advancement of business interests. That is organizations that are actually comprised of individuals who work in small businesses and who actively advocate for their interest, have strong policies suggesting the use of law firms that specialize in government compliance rather than going to consultants. So this whole paragraph is just saying like, yeah, this is what we should be doing. Once again, I'm expecting that this is not what we're doing because they said in the past, that's what we did. And then like they're saying like, this is what we, like all the actual people think we should be doing, the people who care and know. Yep. So how did so many biz savvy business owners get taken in by this recent wave of fraudulent and near fraudulent consultants? Examining the materials and methodologies pushed by these consultants, one can see a simple but effective tactic, manipulating the ignorance and anxiety of the potential client. Right. Um, <laughs> I love I love your just like chuckle at that. Like, yep. Yeah. I mean, we see it every day in the news yeah. right now. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, when business owners are confronted with a changing legal landscape, there are two questions presented. The first is how to avoid breaking the rules. With Obamacare, new requirements for health insurance coverage left many business owners scrambling to catch up. With exceptions available only to businesses employing less than 24 people, even very small businesses were subject to new rules. The second question is where consultants found their edge. That, like, I don't even know what the second thing is. But that's a very important sentence because it's the author like giving emphasis to like, oh, there's these two things, but this is the one. Mm. This is the reason. So that reason is how can one leverage the new landscape to gain a competitive advantage? When faced with a new arena to navigate, many business owners assume that there must be a way to cheat the system beyond simply making sure they did not break the new rules. So like the passage is all, you know, kind of talking about like, how are these business owners, if they're so smart, how are they all falling for this? And at the end, it says, like, there's kind of two reasons. One, people are trying not to break the law, but even more importantly, right, that like the one that gives them the edge to like, going through this is people are trying to cheat the system and and try to try to benefit from that. All right. What do you think about that one? Um... I think it was interesting. I mean, it's it's stuff I like. So it's it's one of those. It's hard. We talk about this all the time. It's you you need to be careful with these passages to not bring in outside information, not to bring in outside enthusiasm or disgust or anything else, and right. just like just like be level and go. Oh, they, uh, like I don't want to respond to that. <laughs> uh, yeah, my dopamine is is wanting to be released. <laughs> right, right. Um, There's things firing inside my brain. Exactly. I need to suppress. Yeah, this absolutely is. Is I think a pretty interesting passage, especially with people who are interested in I don't know healthcare, which is everyone who's taking this exam because they're like using Obamacare as an example. You gotta you gotta keep an eye open for that. Like they could have talked about other laws that like change things and people took advantage, but they specifically talked about Obamacare. And I don't think that's because they wanted to give you a passage that's nice and interesting to you. I think they did that because they know that students are gonna bring in outside info. They people students know things and they're gonna be tempted to uh to to bring that that knowledge to bear, which yep. is a problem. So let's take a look at the questions here. We got this first question. The author implies that some of the business owners who were duped by consultants, A, fell victim to their own greed. B, were blameless and seeking to simply follow the rules. C, were angered by being depicted in the New York Times as dupes. And D, would have been exempt from Obamacare. Oh, so this is interesting. So again, this is where bringing my own outside thing, when I said, oh, everyone wants the quick fix for their diet, I'm blaming the victim in their own greed. But the author mm -hmm. didn't bring that up. I, I, that was my own thought process. So um, I don't think the author brought this up. Um, we're angered by being depicted in the New York Times as dupes. This is one of those things that I think is like a, a red herring. Like, yes, the New York Times did, uh, I think, um, specifically say they were duped. So, but I don't think that's what the author was saying. 
right. that they were angered by it being makes depicted. sense. It makes sense. Exactly. That people would be angry about it, but yeah. like they didn't actually talk about that yeah. in the passage. Yeah. So like I could, from a recall standpoint, I think that that may be an interesting one that people pick, um, would have been exempt from exempt from Obamacare. Uh, again, I think this is straight fact. I don't, but I don't think the author is implying that some of the business owners, et cetera. Um, so that just leaves me with B. I think. Yeah. So it's not B. Oh no. So it goes down to that. Like what, what were the, the business owners? What were their motives? Like uh, that's the whole last paragraph, right? Yeah. Where they talked about, there were some people that were just trying not to break the rules. Yeah. But more importantly, Right. Like, the, and that was like that second question of where we found the edge that people were trying to cheat the system. Mm. Yeah. And so, so that's like where we get like what the author thinks, why these people <laughs> fell for it. So it is, it is actually a like fell right. victim to their own greed. That was something that I feel like I set you up for that because you said like, Oh, they're being greedy. And then I'm like, you gotta be careful not bringing outside <laughs> info. And then like, and then they actually like talk about that later. And you're like, ah, oh, that was the thing that I wasn't supposed to bring. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And, and I think because it was the very last sentence, I think I had already tuned out and looking at the question going, okay, what am I, Happens what do I all need the to time. prepare for? Yeah. Students are like, you know, like getting to the end and like, all right, ready for questions. And they're kind of like, <laughs> eh, whatever, just get through this. But yeah. <sighs> yeah. All right. Oh, for one. All right. Question 31 here. Suppose a woman has recently graduated from one of the most prestigious business schools in the country, and she seeks to leverage her new degree by setting up a consulting company. The author would suggest that the woman should A, start start and successfully grow one or more of her own businesses before turning to consulting, B, develop techniques for helping a business to grow, even if such techniques border on fraudulent, uh, C, take her first few clients for free so she uh, so as to build up a list of references, or D, capitalize on the ignorance and anxiety surrounding new government regulations. All right, so uh, I know specifically the the author basically said, like, look, you should ask the question, what have you done? And so the, um, ah, this is an interesting one. So this comes back to this rightly asks, right? Mm -hmm. About starting a company. Do you, do you have a personal history and success? So the author is saying, Hey, like maybe these consultants should be these people. The author would suggest that the woman should. So A is very enticing because of that. Um, but the off, the author did say that if they haven't done that, they should have techniques of helping a business grow, right, successfully. But this last part of the sentence, even yeah. if such techniques border on fraudulent, I'm like, well, the author doesn't really <laughs> want to promote that. Yeah. So that one to me, I should throw out C, take her first few clients for free so as to build up a list of references. The the client the, the author did talk about having a list of references, but I don't think mentioned specifically taking on clients for free. Yeah. Uh, and D, capitalize on the ignorance and anxiety. Like, yeah, there is some ignorance and anxiety, but I don't think that's what the author is saying. So I'm gonna go with A. Yeah, absolutely. I love like everything you you latched onto there is absolutely right. Like especially like for B, like it starts off like perfect and then like swerves off off the highway into the woods all of a sudden. And you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like the author doesn't say be fraudulent, right? Like that's not what the author was trying to say. Um, I also want to point out a lot of times people are tempted by C because like they do say you need references. Mm -hmm. But the author never said to like take on clients for free. And to be honest, like uh, that makes sense. And so a lot of students want to pick that. Like the passage said, you need references. It makes sense that I would do a couple for free to build this like pile of references. Yep. And that feels good. And that makes sense, like using your brain. But remember, the MCAT is not looking for an analyst. They're looking for a reporter, <laughs> right? Like you don't need the to analyze MCAT, it. The MCAT does not want you to use your brain. They just no. want you to read and answer the questions. Exactly. Do not think at all. <laughs> In the cars. I want to add an asterisk In the cars. to that. Yeah. The whole car section is not a test of how smart, how reasonable, how logical you are. It's a test of do you see what they said? And like that rightly in the first paragraph, like that's so key because if it said a business owner would ask, like 
we don't know that the author thinks that that's a good question or that's an idea, but like, because of that rightly, that one word yeah. in there, that makes it so like the authors on, yeah, like they should have like some business success in the past for us to buy. And like, that's, that's such a key thing. It's why you want to train yourself to look for those, those like key words, um, especially things related to contrast and opinion and adverbs are chief among those. Yeah. Oh. All right. All right. Well, one out of two, All right, 50%. Going up. All right. Next question. The author would most probably agree that when faced with the issue of complying with government regulations, the best approach is to already, like before I even look at the answer choices, I know there's going to be some answers here that make sense, Mm -hmm. but are not in the passage, right? So you got to be, remember that you're being a reporter. So the best approach is to avoid consultants and use an established law firm when looking for ways to cheat the system. (laughs) (laughs) B, seek advice from legal counsel and focus on complying with the regulations. C, use the services of a consultant who has reliable methodologies. D, hire one of the consultants recommended by an organization such as the ACCE. Mm -hmm. So this is bringing some trickery into this again. Um, So... Uh, obviously, A, I'm going to throw out, right? Because the author is not implying that we're looking to cheat the system. Um, yeah. It's, obviously, it does say that some people are, but not for everyone. So I'm going to throw that out. Um, so seek advice from legal counsel and focus on complying with the regulations. That sounds very pretty. And it seems to go along with this paragraph here. Uh, where the the organization actually recommends that, right? I think mm-hmm. um, looking at those law firms. Um, C, use the services of a consultant who has reliable methodologies. Uh, potentially, maybe that kind of sounds okay as well. So I'm between B and C right now. Uh, and then hire one of the consultants recommended by an organization such as ACCE. I'm going to throw that one out because ACCE doesn't recommend hiring consultants. They recommend hiring uh, legal counsel. Right. So, oh, man. Um, oh, legal counsel. So, so B and C are so close together. The only difference is would the author suggest legal counsel or a consultant? Um, and I don't know, I don't know if I remember anywhere where the author took a stand on consultant versus legal counsel other than bringing up, um, what the ACCE did. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to remember where that other rightly was (laughs) to, to figure out, but I can't see it off the top of my head here. I think, I think you have both of them highlighted actually, both of the rightly. So there's, oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't think that helps. But. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't help looking at it now. Um, yeah. So I, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with B just because it seems like just my gut tells me that the author has a negative slant towards consultants. Right. And like there, there's go nothing positive about consultants in this entire passage. Yeah. Right. Um. Like. Like we have what a consultant should be, they talk about, but like the author doesn't ever say, and like a lot of consultants are this, right? Like the author never says that. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is there's that, that paragraph, um, where it says, um, in fact, this is exactly what the practice is, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then that is organizations who are actually comprised of individuals who work in small businesses <laughs> and who actively advocate for the interests have strong policies suggesting law yeah. firms. So there, there's not, there's, there's not a lot of like very obvious opinions where it's like the author's like, I think, but like the way that that's worded, like, wait, these guys are actually comprised of this mm-hmm. and they actively advocate for the interests and, and they prefer um, law firms that specialize in government compliance rather than going to consultants. And so yep. there actually is like a contrast comparison between the two. Yep. Um, but yeah, very good. All right. Question 33. Uh, the passage suggests that before the era of enormously long federal laws and regulations, a business owner was likely to a need little to no help from a business consultant or a lawyer. 
B, need help from a lawyer and no help from a business consultant. C, want more help from a business consultant but be unable to justify the expense. Or D, encounter business consultants who are engaging in unethical business practices. Um, and so specifically it mentions, <clears throat> um, where was it? Here. Uh, blah, blah, staggering amounts of information, entirely understandable that the small business owner would seek expert help. In the past, they would turn to their attorney or a respected long-standing law firm for guidance. So it specifically talks about what this question wants. Um, need little to no help. So I don't think that's the answer. Little to no help from a business consultant or a lawyer because it says they that's what they would do. Yeah. Um, need help from a lawyer and no help from a business consultant, potentially, right? Because it doesn't mention that they sought consultants. Want more help from a business consultant? No, that wouldn't be it. Uh, encounter business consultants who are engaging in a no. So I'm going to go with B because it seems like that's the right answer. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm going to go with B because that's the right one. Because it seems <laughs> it's right. It's like a yeah. double AMC uh, explanation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're famous explanations. B is wrong because it doesn't make sense, right? Like, they're just like oh, thanks. Um, but yeah, um, I also want to point out like A feels so good. If you did not read this passage, like before the like enormously long federal laws, a business owner probably didn't need as much help, right? Like that that makes sense. Like using yep. your brain and kind of thinking and being an analyst. Yep. But remember that you're you're not an analyst in the car sections, right? You're a reporter. What did the passage say? Right? The passage said, "Well, we used to go to lawyers," and so that's your answer. Is we used to go to lawyers, mm. um, and so B is going to be the correct answer there. Yeah. All right. I forget what one of my three three out of four. Yeah. 75%? I'll take it. Um, <clears throat> question 34. The author would most support using a business consultant who A, is willing to demonstrate his past success. I, I'm just, uh, I, I would just want to point out the um, the kind of the <laughs> patriarchal nature of this. <laughs> right, um, right. But uh, we'll move on. Is, is willing to demonstrate his past success with clients by divulging financial information about them, which shows the level of financial growth achieved by using his help, is also an attorney. C has credentials that suggest he is capable of helping clients gain an unfair advantage. Or D has a personal history of successfully growing businesses and a track record of successfully uh, successful consulting clients. So the author would most support using a business consultant who right and so we get back up to rightly asks um mm -hmm. in this first one here um and and again this kind of rightly here as well so most using most support using a business consultant who willing to demonstrate his past successes with clients by divulging financial information about them, which shows the level of financial growth. So this one directly goes against the um, while maintaining quiet confident client confidentiality. So that right. that wouldn't work. Uh, is also attorney isn't um, isn't brought up anywhere. It's kind of. I think a lot of people will go, oh, yeah, a business consultant yeah. and legal background. Cool. That that must be the answer. Right. Because um, the author is like clearly favoring like lawyers over consultants. Exactly. And so like, oh, it's a, like that feels right. But like that's not what the question's asking. Right. Yeah. Like what would make you support a business consultant? Yep. Uh, C again is is trying to to bait you into this unfair advantage because people are looking for to cheat the system potentially but again that that's not it uh d i think is the most right answer here has a personal history of successful growing a business and a track record it probably should be and or a track record of successful uh consult successful right. consulting clients there yeah yeah if it said or and or that would be fine but we're looking for like what would they most prefer ah, yeah. both right both. Like if i'm yep. crafting the dream consultant right yep. it would be one with both yep. um but yeah Absolutely. Um, I just want to point out, I, I think that, like, I, I, I don't know if that's what the, the 
the MCAT is trying to do. But I, I feel like, you know, if, if you're a sociopath and you don't care about <laughs> other people's rights, you're going to be really tempted to pick all these answers to say like, oh, like do this to take advantage of the system. And like that, <laughs> that, that feels right. I think there might be some like unintentional filtering going on here. Well, uh, again, in the kind of climate that we're in right now, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Last question of this passage. Yeah. So the relationship between seeking the advice of an attorney and seeking the advice of a business consultant when facing a new regulatory landscape is most analogous to. So this is a hard, harder question because this is a reasoning beyond the text question. They're asking you for an analogy here. Um, a, the difference between seeking legal help after being injured in an accident versus simply working out an acceptable compensation with the offending party yourself. B, the choice between using drugs or surgery to treat a medical condition. <laughs> C, hiring an admissions consultant to help write a college application essay versus using the free help provided by the high school guidance counselors. D, electing the standard uh, surgical procedure to treat a dangerous medical condition versus choosing a newer, more unproven, and much more expensive alternative. <laughs> um, I, I think you gave away the answer by your uh, kind of intonation there at the end. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I, I think D is the right answer here, and I'll, I'll walk through these. Um, so the difference between seeking legal help after being injured in an accident versus simply working out an acceptable compensation uh, from an offending party yourself, that's not comparing like using one service versus another, right? This is the whole thing is I'm using one service versus another service. They're both services, but the author has clearly said consultants um, – are more expensive, potentially fancier, do these things differently, potentially. Um, and so this this one makes it seem almost like, oh, the, they're trying to get me to say that one is expensive and one is free. So I'm going to do it myself. That's free. Oh, it's the same. <clears throat> so that one I'm going to throw out. Uh, drugs and surgery to treat a medical condition uh, is just weird, and I definitely not the right answer. Right. Um, hiring an admissions consultant. Again, A and C are the same. It's comparing paying versus free. Uh, and I, I think, I don't know why the whoever wrote this question potentially thinks that's what's going to trap a student, um, but it didn't get me, and I hope that's the right thing. Uh, and so D is choosing, right? Uh, electing the standard surgical procedure, right? What is the law firm that is doing this, the people who have done this forever, uh, they have your best interest at heart, what have they done? Versus, oh, like, ooh, shiny new pill that I could take. So um, I'm gonna go with D. Yeah, absolutely. Like, the whole thing in the past is like, we used to use law firms, we should still be using law firms, right? Yeah. New consultants, like not not a great thing. And like, we're just trying to look for something that matches this where there's like a standard thing that worked great. And everyone's like shelling out money when they shouldn't for something. Um, now, that being said, I think a lot of students, like, start to think too much when they get to these questions, right? Because technically, I mean, this question is asking, like there's nothing in the passage about a surgical procedure. Mm. Um, and so when they read that, their gears start to turn. Um, and it's it's a little bit dangerous because you do, like the answers are not in the passage, but they still have to be based on the passage, right? You still have to answer the question through the lens of the passage itself. And so if the difference between those two is like, ah, one's what we did forever and like people are doing this other thing and it's stupid. Um, <laughs> we're looking for something that matches that, right? Um, and I think D matches that better than better than anything else. I know a lot of students might like think too much on D and say like, well, what if the new procedure, even if it's more expensive and it's not super proven, what if it's actually better? Right. And but that's a problem. That's that's you thinking. Right. And <laughs> thinking is a problem. I really need to be careful what I'm saying here um, in the car section. <laughs> asterisk. Um, so just kind of like recognizing, like not kind of like falling for that, like making sure, like go back to passage. What do I think the basis of this is? And then just trying to match it to what we have here. Yeah. Ooh. All right. So that is the passage. Pretty straightforward. Uh, again, I, I really like that the, the takeaway from this one seemed to be like you're a reporter, not an analyst. Although it's hard to say that because 
The other thing that we talk about all the time is the MCAT is a critical thinking and analysis test. And maybe that's really the the biggest struggle for a lot of students with cars is they take that mentality into the cars section and they overthink it. Absolutely. hundred percent. Like if I ever have a student that says like, oh, I'm doing really well in three sections, but I'm struggling in one. It's cars. It's always cars. Yeah. And that's because what makes you successful in the sciences hurts you in cars. Yeah. And like, because you have to like bring in knowledge and info and like outside stuff, you have tools and things that you can bring to bear and, and analyze and interpret. But like in, in cars, you have to not do those things. And so you're rewarded for doing this honestly throughout your entire like college career of like critical thinking and like taking what you know and combining it. And that's how all exams work in undergrad, right? Uh, when was the last, I actually like thinking about this. I have never had an exam in college where they're like, oh, read this and then answer questions off of it. Every single exam I had in college was like, oh, do you know this stuff, right? And they're like testing to see if you have the knowledge. And so cars is kind of like a weird thing that kind of comes out of out of left field. And you have to realize that you're, everything is in the passage, right? It's it, thinking too much is, is a problem here. Um, and so there are some really, really intelligent students out there um, that struggle with cars. And, and in a lot of ways, like if you're if you're really used to just using your knowledge and critical thinking to solve all of your problems, you're actually less likely to do well in cars. Yeah. And so it's kind of a weird thing where the smarter you are, the worse you do. And so <laughs> um, you just have to, you know, kind of like understand the game, understand what cars is trying to test um, at its at its basis. Cars is trying to see how well you understand someone else's perspective. It's not a test of how smart, how reasonable, how logical you are. It's a test of, do you understand what's going on in other people's heads? I think that a passage like this, which is kind of interesting and like more easy to like relate to and students know some things about, it's a lot easier to make those mistakes because you have some knowledge about it. Like if there's a passage about the Russian oligarchy, you don't know anything about it. Like you're not going to bring in the outside knowledge. You're safe, right? Somebody mm-hmm. getting like taken advantage of by like somebody in business, like you probably have some experience with this. Um, this is something we see all the time. We have in one of our exams, we have a passage about viral videos. And in the same exam, there's a passage about linguistic relativity. <laughs> Students always do better on the linguistic relativity one, which doesn't make sense because every student knows viral videos, but that's the yeah. problem is that they're bringing in their own knowledge. All right. So hopefully a good good learning uh, pearl there for everyone. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want, if you're listening to this. Uh, again, premed.tv, you can watch and follow along with all the passages and questions, and we'll see you next week.